Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. Today, let's continue our Destination Disney custom doll series by planning out the next couple of dolls in the series. I know it's been kind of a while since the first doll in the series, which was Main Street USA. I do want to note that I have a lot of other projects that I really want to be working on. So the Destination Disney doll series will be something that's sort of sprinkled in uh, among all of those other things. My love for the Disney parks is something that is always there in the back of my mind and it's not something that's gonna go away. I will definitely be returning to this project over and over. Since it does take me so long to complete each doll project and to get it to the point where I can actually share it with you on my channel, I thought it would be cool to share with you my planning process and to make some concept art together for the next couple of dolls in the series. I did this kind of video once before when I shared with you the process of creating concept art for my melodic doll. So we're going to do something very similar to that today. The reason I say the next couple of dolls in the series is because the next installment in the series is a pair of dolls. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I like to do this. <laughs> for whatever reason, it's not hard enough to just make one doll at a time. Uh, I always get these ideas to do something like in a pair. Since the first doll in the series was Main Street USA, which is located in the Magic Kingdom Park, so the next doll that I would like to make is something that comes from the Epcot Park. If I think of like a character or a thing that represents Epcot to me, besides the Epcot ball, <laughs> Spaceship Earth, um, besides that, what represents Epcot to me is Figment. If you're not too familiar with Figment, because apparently some people aren't that familiar with the character, Figment basically is called Figment because he's a little purple dragon who is a figment of imagination. Figment and Dreamfinder are two characters who originated in the attraction Journey into Imagination, which opened in Epcot's Future World on March 5th, 1983. Created by Imagineers Tony Baxter and Steve Kirk, the 13-minute dark ride introduced us to these two lovable characters. One, a man who created a dream machine to collect dreams and ideas to create new things out of them. And the other, a playful dragon who appeared as a product of the man's imagination. Writers traveled through artistic and lively depictions of art, literature, the performing arts, and science, and are left with the inspiring message that imagination is the key to unlocking the wonders of the world. After being closed for renovation in October 1998, Dreamfinder and Figment completely disappeared from the attraction, being replaced with a lower budget attraction that lacked all the charm and heart of the original. Figment has since returned to the ride, but Dreamfinder is still missing, and many people lament the unfortunate evolution of the attraction. Even so, Figment remains a beloved character who has become synonymous with Epcot, and his likeness is used in lots of merchandise and marketing for the park. I can't remember if I got to actually ride the original Figment ride the first time that I went to Disney World when I was six years old, but the ride would have still been there, so I think I might have gone on it once. I feel almost like I can remember it a tiny bit, but I'm not sure if I'm just imagining that because I watched a YouTube video of the ride. <laughs> I want my dolls to embody the original spirit of the ride, but also to be very different. So I'm going to take these two characters and I'm going to doll fairyify them, which means that I'm going to be interpreting them a little bit differently. I'm not going to be faithfully recreating Dreamfinder and Figment the way that they appeared in the original ride. But if you watch my videos, that shouldn't really be a surprise to you. <laughs> Half the fun is redesigning and reimagining, and I'm using my imagination, so... The original incarnation of Figment himself is going to be my little spark of inspiration. So this doll is not going to be necessarily a little dragon, it's going to be a girl who resembles Figment. I am aware that the character of Figment, as far as I know, was not intended to be a girl character, but that's fine because I'm just making a doll inspired by the character. I'm imagining my Figment doll to be a cute girl who embodies all of the, the imaginative spirit and energy of the original Figment character but she's also going to obviously look quite different and I'm going to really go heavy on the steampunk inspiration behind the original ride. As for Dreamfinder, he was first imagined to be a rather jolly character, sort of like Santa Claus. However, of course, I can't resist. I'm not going to make him a Santa Claus like jolly character. I'm going to make him a more good-looking and attractive guy character. <laughs> 
So I'm going to be taking quite a few cues from the Disney Marvel Disney Kingdoms comic book where he is depicted, you know, in his younger years, basically. I think this pair of characters is a very unique duo, so I'm excited to see how I can reinterpret them into a doll fairy version that will go in my doll series. So let's get started. So I've actually had the idea in my mind for quite some time now to do a doll based on Figment. So um, I guess a couple of months ago I drew this doodle of Figment. <laughs> um, and then I tried drawing Figment as a cute little magical girl, but I didn't really have any good ideas yet and I really don't like how this turned out. So you can see here that my drawing has the character wearing a sweater that says Figment, and that's based on this sweater that he is sometimes depicted as wearing. Um, I, I mean, he looks cute in it, but I don't think I'm gonna go with, you know, the bright yellow and bright red. This is definitely not what the design is going to be like. Uh, I did give her little space buns uh, to go with the horns. I do think that's cute. I might still go with that, but I'm not sure. So I collected a bunch of inspiring images here on Pinterest. Look at this one. Oh, it's so cute. So here's what the original Dreamfinder animatronic looked like on the ride. And he was riding on this uh, dream machine. All right, so a lot of my inspiration is gonna come from this comic, the Disney Kingdoms uh, comic book. The comic book takes place in like Victorian England and that hence this the steampunk idea behind the look of it. Um, which again makes sense because the original look of the ride was this, you know, this steampunk thing. So in the comic the character of Dreamfinder is clearly, you know, kind of a younger good-looking guy <laughs> uh, and it's sort of an origin story for him, and Figment comes straight from his imagination. The rest of this Pinterest board is now I just searched for steampunk fashion and came up with some cool stuff that I saved in here. Um, and I'm going to be using all of this stuff to inspire me as well. So yeah, there's just some cool details in here. I really like stuff like the goggles and the boots and these like interesting pouches and stuff um and then some like these cool vests like that vest is really cool and dreamfinder could have a cool vest the elements that we need for dreamfinder he always has some sort of a beard or goatee and his hair is red He's got a top hat, he's got a white bow tie, uh, a blue jacket or blazer type thing, and a vest. And you can see in this picture that the vest is like a sort of a purpley burgundy and it has patterns on the fabric. You can't tell too much what the patterns are. He's got a little chain. He's wearing white gloves. He's got goggles on his top hat. So there's a lot of elements here that make the character recognizable. So I want to make sure that I have most of those elements in his design. Okay, I think that's enough stalling. I'm going to try to draw something now. My camera stopped recording, so unfortunately I lost the first few minutes of this sketch. But you can see here that so far I'm sticking to the fairly straightforward Dreamfinder look with the blazer, bow tie, vest, and beard. To make the design a little more interesting and steampunk edgy, I'm adding length to the coat and changing the shape of the collar. I might even add some embroidery there eventually, along with on the cuffs. He'll have a top hat adorned with goggles, which I intend to make rather ornate and steampunk looking if I can manage it. On his other arm will be some sort of mechanical contraption on his wrist, as depicted in the comic book illustration here.
this design is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much following the way that the character generally looks. Um, I would like to come up with something a little bit more inventive, something a little bit more, I don't know, something more steampunk-ish, but I haven't quite figured that out. So, um, But I think this is a good place to start. Let's see if I can figure out Figment. This is going to be a little bit harder, I think. <laughs> For Figment's design, I knew I needed to sketch out a bunch of doodles first, just to get an idea. At this point, I don't really have a clear image in my mind, so I'm experimenting with some of the different inspiration pieces I found on Pinterest, and not worrying about the quality of the sketches, as you can see. <laughs> My first few outfit attempts ended up looking very piratey, which is not what I wanted. Making the wings a steampunk contraption constructed of copper plates and leather, though, is something I knew I wanted to incorporate, so I sketched out this backpack type structure with the Epcot symbol on it. I was trying to go for a light, ruffly look for the skirt to evoke the idea of pink clouds, but the style looked too heavy to me instead of light and airy and energetic, which is what I want for Figment. Then I tried a cuter look with a more tutu-like skirt, but I didn't really like that either. I think part of it is that Figment should look playful, and all of these are just a little too mature and elegant looking. I was getting discouraged, so I took a break. But just a few minutes into the break, I came across this image. And I felt like this was finally a breakthrough. Giving my figment a cute little overall shorts outfit would be the perfect way to blend the steampunk vibe with figment's childlike playfulness. Having finally figured that out in my messy sketches, I can now do a much better sketch in a cute pose to fully visualize what I want the doll to look like. I'm giving her pigtails instead of space buns because, well, I don't want her to look like Mickey Mouse. I feel like the pigtails look dynamic and playful. I'm thinking I would like to include some pink ruffles on the shorts if possible to return to that idea of pink clouds and ethereal magic. I'm not totally sure about the Mary Jane shoes. I might end up going with cool boots instead if I can find some that I like better, you know, to repaint, but this looks cute for now, especially with some tall socks. just take a look at some of the fabrics that I have and kind of brainstorm about what colors I might make things. Remember that he does wear a shirt that's yellow and has red accents on it. So I am considering making this, you know, overall shorts piece a yellowy color. So first off, here is the doll I'm going to be using as the base. So this is a Monster High Twyla. She is on a shorter body, which is why I chose her, besides, of course, the fact that her skin is a light purple color. So this is gonna be her skin tone, basically. So I have this fabric, which is sort of a corduroy, and it's a yellow color, but it's more of a mustard kind of a yellow. It's not a bright yellow. I feel like this, this could work because the fact that it's corduroy and it has these little stripes on it um, might look good 
for this. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly how I feel about this going with the purple. Yeah, I think actually this would work pretty well and really give you the idea, like really summon the image of figment in your mind. For the shirt underneath, I'm thinking plain white because then it would like tone things down a little bit. I don't want this to be too ridiculously colorful. Okay, so here's some white so you can visualize. That's just going to, I think, make the outfit look more normal. I'm thinking about making her hair orange. I think that's really the only option. She has orange, uh, the, the horns are gonna be orange, and then for her hair to be like an orangey red color, I think would just make the most sense because Figment's accent color, his main accent color is that orange. Obviously she'll have to have yellow eyes because that's what Figment has. The rest, I think we'll just have to figure out as we go along, but the orange is definitely gonna be factored in there and I kind of want to factor in some pink somewhere as well, perhaps in that trim. If I can figure out some way to have like a really tiny pink trim there. So now that we have this a little bit figured out, I'm thinking let's figure out Dreamfinder's fabrics. For Dreamfinder, I'm going to be using this BTS doll. He will be substantially taller than Twyla, which I want because um, I want her to be just sort of floating there like she's a little flying dragon. So for his outfit, um, his coat is a deep blue and his vest is some sort of purple. For his coat, I have blue satin and I have blue velvet. The velvet is really nice and soft and it's also stretchy-ish. Um, but I don't know if it will look classy enough and I think it would be good if I had like a dark blue in um, like a cotton fabric as well for the pants I mean I think the velvet would work I mean I feel like it's a little crazy like it's a little costumey but again this is based on a character from a Disney ride so it's kind of like you know no holds barred and then for the vest the two main options I have for that, this um, reddish purple maroon color. The other option <laughs> is a brocade <laughs> and it's super fancy and shiny and very purple and bright. It's definitely brighter than this one. This is much more muted. Maybe we should go all out, I don't know. Then only a, a small bit of the vest is going to show through anyway because he's gonna have the jacket on over it. So I'm kind of leaning towards using this. He will have a shirt underneath that will just be a white shirt and he'll have a white bow tie. Not sure how I'm gonna make his hat or his goggles or Figment's goggles. So it's gonna require some thought and ingenuity and imagination. Also one little note I forgot to mention before um, about her wings, about Figment's wings. So Figment's wings are going to be attached with this sort of backpack thing. <laughs> um, and they're going to look mechanical and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna just make those out of craft foam and paint them. Um, but what I'm gonna do is make them copper, like a metallic copper color and that way it'll be orange-y, like Figment's wings are orange, but it will also look steampunk and cool. I hope you like the designs I've come up with. There is a pretty good chance that the, the designs will change and evolve a little bit over the process of creating the dolls. I hope that you had fun uh, thinking through the process with me and drawing the characters out. And I hope that you will look forward to actually completing them as dolls and that you'll subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I really would love to get to 100,000 subscribers, so that would help me out so much. I'd like to say thank you to my patrons whose support makes all of this doll magic possible. If you enjoy my videos and would like to help me make more of them, check out Patreon. I've recently redone my Patreon tiers so that the rewards are even better for a smaller pledge amount. So there's never been a better time to join. For instance, you can get access to all of my behind the scenes and works in progress photos for only a pledge of $3 a month. And you can also get access to my exclusive videos for only $5 a month. 
I'm doing this in an effort to make my bonus content available to more people. So I really hope you'll consider joining. I would love to see you there. I'd also like to remind you that the Doll Fairy now has an official shop with apparel, accessories, charms, stickers, and lots of cool stuff for sale. I designed all of the merch on thedollfairy.com, so head over to check it out and sign up for the email list to find out the inside scoop about upcoming sales and events. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you again soon for more doll magic. Bye!